Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn about RPA testing with Studio and get an introduction of it. First of all, before you get into details, certain terms, certain concepts you must know. So in this video, we are going to learn what is RPA testing. We are going to learn why RPA testing. And also we will get acquainted with certain testing terms. For example, you will hear something called unit testing, integration testing, system testing, acceptance testing with respect to RPA we will learn. So the very first topic is what is RPA testing? The project we create in robotic process automation or RPA or in your UAPA studio when you create a project, it is a piece of software, right? You agree with that? It's a software. So RPA testing is an integral part of the software development life cycle. So when you are building a software, you must do certain testing. So RPA testing is an integral part of your software development life cycle in RPA. Now, what is the definition of RPA testing then? So the RPA testing is an integral part of RPA software development, which aims to identify and resolve issues or problems in your RPA project as early as possible in the development stages. You have developed complete RPA project, moved it to production, then you are real realizing in the production, the RPA project is not working because of there are certain problems with the automation. The selectress is different. The application that you have worked on, now it is a different version in the production. So all those things we have to identify much early, possibly in the development stages so that it doesn't fail. Okay, so this is the definition of RPA testing. Therefore, a proactive maintenance is what we need to do and reactive maintenance is what we must avoid. That is the main goal of RPA. Proactive, before it happens, you have already knew how to tackle it. All, all, already you have made some corrections into your RPA project that is called proactive maintenance. You have already maintained what is going to happen, you know. And then reactive maintenance means something happened and you are trying to correct it. So that is the problem that we are going to solve through RPA testing. Okay, so you got a bit of theme of RPA testing. Anybody who will ask you what is RPA testing? You say that RPA testing more like in a software development how we do a testing. It is similar to that, which aims to identify and resolve issues as early as possible in the development stages. Okay. All right. Now we have understood what is RPA testing. It is all about talking about testing proactively. Now, why you have to do RPA testing? That is important. Remember, while you know, once you have built your RPA project, there are three categories of problem that might appear. The very first category is changes in the application. You have developed on the version one of the application. Tomorrow, they have made a newer version of the application. So what will happen to your RPA? Your RPA will not work. You would find there's a new interface for that application. The new functionalities have added. There are new buttons. The interface has completely changed. Now in that case, your RPA will definitely fail because you have designed your RPA on the older version and you have a newer version now in the production. So remember changes in the application can lead to RPA project failure. This is one category. The other category is environmental issues. So what do I mean by environment? Your project will be running on a virtual machine, your unattended automation or whatever the, it is running on a different machine. Now, while it is running, Let's say the browser got updated in the environment where it is running on a virtual machine where the automation is supposed to run. There, the browser got updated. There is a different browser and where you have developed as a developer, you are using a different browser. Now, in that case, what would happen? Even in that kind of environment, you have not tested. In the browser, let's say you are using certain browser, certain version of the browser and in the production, there is a different version of the browser or you don't have that browser, it is a different uh, browser altogether. Now in that case, in the environment, it will fail, it will not work. 
VM performance, your virtual machine is not working as it was working on your developer laptop. On your laptop, on your uh, machine, it was working quite fine. But the moment you moved it to production, the moment it went to the virtual machine where it is supposed to run, there it is not performing. This could be another issue. Any kind of system update happened in the virtual machine. Your virtual machine got restarted. Some new updates have come. And after that, uh, the application itself is not opening. Then your RPA will fail. So these are the different categories where your RPA may fail. This is a second category called environment issues. Now the third category is automation issues. Let's say you have developed the workflow which is not appropriate or there is something wrong. Right? Any kind of issues in your RPA workflows or sequences. Unable to detect buttons in prod environment. Select is not working. Uh, error handling you have not deployed properly. So a lot of things can go wrong. So these are the three main categories. One is the target application. Changes in the target application. Second is changes in the environment. Or your workflow itself has some problem. These are the three main categories. RPA testing aims in reducing the maintenance cost. Now, if something goes wrong, let's say the changes in the application or something went, uh, some changes in the environment on, or some changes in the automation workflow needed, what happens? A developer has to sit. Somebody has to sit, work on it. So that you are spending some time on it. It might take one day. It might take three days. It might take a week. So you, there is a cost to it, right? Somebody is working on it. You are spending time. So there is a cost to the company. When RPA project fails, we have to fix it. Allowing us to create. So what would happen through RPA testing? If you have, you can test it proactively, not after the problem happens. You already know if this problem happens, how to handle it. So RPA testing aims on that so that you can create a sustainable and a scalable RPA. That is the main aim. If you do not address these issues early, it can lead to higher maintenance cost. All of a sudden something comes as a surprise. There'll be a high maintenance cost to fix it. To understand why that problem happened, you spend time to find the root cause and then you solve it. So there's a lot of time you might spend. So what would happen? By that time, there's a business disruption. People are expecting that the RPA will do the processing, but it didn't do it entire day. So there is a business disruption. Getting it? So RPA testing will help you solving all these kind of problems at an early stage. That is the main aim of RPA testing. Hope you have understood this. Now let's move on to something more important. Certain terms for testing is important for you to know. RPA testing in UiPath follows standard software testing practices. So if you have worked on a testing background, you pretty well know it. If not, if you are very new, then it is very important for you to understand few terms. So when you are developing a software, you have to go through testing. Very vital part or important part. You should not miss testing. Now, when it comes to testing, there are certain standard practices. You have to do testing this way. You should follow step one, step two, step three. There are certain standards. So these standards are categorized into called unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing. Now the question would come, okay, Rakesh, what is unit testing? What is integration testing? What is system testing? I have no experience. How will I really understand? And with context to RPA, how do I understand? Don't worry. I have created certain images which will help you to remember this for a very long time. Now let's see what is unit testing. Unit testing means testing workflows or your sequences or your XAML files individually. For example, I have created a XAML file called read input, which is going to read the input from my Excel. So I'm testing that in every different situations, the Excel is read. Let's say in the product production environment, Excel is not there and you're using Excel activities, then it will fail. So you are testing and seeing that this XAML is going to work. So that is known as unit testing, small, small things you are testing. Now in an RPA project, what is the smallest thing? Your XAML, your sequence. Right, the XAML or the sequence is the smallest part. So you are, you know, you are testing each unit. So this I am testing. Then I am testing enter customer details. It is entering certain details into a portal. So I am testing that XAML. So testing these XAMLs individually, you will call them as unit testing in the context of RPA. Is it clear? Very good. 
let's understand the second term which says integration testing now what is integration testing testing the interaction between two sequences or two xaml files i am reading something let's say that data i want to utilize in the second xaml where it will be entering the data in in our application now have i created proper arguments which will pass the data from this to this right have i it will come in a data table form have i made it to small small parts so that i can put it into a variable and then enter into the portal have i done that so all kind of such testing on is known as integration testing that means you are involving this reading the excel data and then entering into the portal you, there are a lot of things should happen in between such as breaking the data table into small small variables passing this data table as an argument to the second workflow all those testing you do it and see practically is it really entering the data as i need or not let's say you have to split some name you have to split the entire name into first name last name is it doing it so all those kind of testing you will call it as integration testing getting a testing between multiple different sequences between two sequences or more than that okay you're checking whether they are working together or not this is known as integration working together or not it could be two it could be more doesn't matter hope you have got this integration testing let's move on to our third term which is important called system testing in your project you might be having multiple jamls let's say 10 jamls 12 jamls you have got 30 jamls now overall when you run it when you run this project is it meeting the expected behavior is it meeting the expected standards is it meeting the business need why are you building this there is a need right there is a team who is doing the work manually and you want to automate so is it really doing exactly how it is needed or there is some kind of a error is it do you have a error logic to handle that have you created business exceptions at what point the data should not be processed all of this testing you do that is known as system testing entire project you are testing end to end so when you do that you call that a system testing developers or testers accessing the behavior of the entire automation project this is known as system testing clear the last term is called acceptance testing you have built it you will hand over it to a business okay your project has been built now please kindly check it so they will from the client part from the end user somebody will be there some group of people who will be testing your automation that you have built and they will say okay it is meeting the expected behavior it is meeting the business needs or they will say no 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 i asked you to do this but the uh, bot is doing in a different way you have to change the logic so some kind of feedback would come through the acceptance testing and based on that you can still modify your rpa project and again give give it to them to do a one more acceptance testing so this is the final round when the end user accepts it it's all good then you move it to production after that it goes to the production so these are the couple of terms are highly important once again i'll go through it the very first one we learnt is unit testing where we are testing the individual sequences or workflows or jaml files second we have learned about integration testing where we are checking the communication between two sequences is it happening properly or not in the third one we are checking system testing your entire project you are testing end to end whether it is working as per the behavior as per the uh, requirement or not business requirement or not right is it fulfilling fulfilling the business requirement or not you are testing that this is known as system testing and finally the end user really approves hey what you have done is really good it is meeting the expectation or they will say no it is still not meeting the expectation we have certain changes has to be done right this is the final approval happens and after that if everything is okay once they approve it then it moves to production okay so this is the acceptance testing so this four terms you must remember before we move on to rpa testing all right guys hope this video would have added lot of knowledge to your knowledge bank if so do not forget to give it a like to this video and do subscribe and hit on the bell icon so that you are notified anytime i'm uploading a video thank you let's meet once again in the next content